Hey everyone, welcome to this tutorial where we will explore one of Zig's most powerful features. Today we're going to see how easy it is to use existing C libraries directly from Zig code. One of the things that got me really excited about a different language, Clojure, when I was learning it, was that although the Clojure ecosystem felt small, I had interoperability with anything that ran on the JVM. So uh, you could interop with Java, Scala, eventually Kotlin, after Kotlin really kind of caught on. Uh, it was great. And one of the things I like about Zig is that same interoperability, but with the entire C ecosystem, which is so much bigger. So today we'll be working with ImageMagick, a popular image processing library, uh, to create a simple program that's going to apply a sepia filter to some photos. This is a really great real world example of leveraging established C libraries while enjoying Zig's safety and expressiveness. If you're new to Zig or curious about how it works with existing C code, this video is perfect for you. Let's dive right in. Okay, before we start coding, let's make sure we have everything we need. We'll be using Zig 014 for this, so make sure that you have Zig 014. We need the ImageMagick development libraries installed on your system, and you'll need a basic understanding of Zig syntax. But let's be real, if you are watching this video, you probably have a good understanding of how Zig works. Uh, lastly, you'll need a sample image to test with. I've got a sample image of a thumbnail for my YouTube channel, and we're just gonna make it sepia. If you're on Mac OS like me, you can install ImageMagick using Homebrew with brew install image magic. For Linux users, you can use your package manager. Uh, you, if you're a Linux user, you probably know what you're doing here. But for example, on Ubuntu, you can do sudo apt git install lib magic wand dash dev. Okay, let's get started. So I've got on my screen here, uh, my YouTube folder, we're gonna make a new directory called zig image magic. And I'm gonna cd into zig image magic. This is completely empty, so we're gonna run uh, zig init. But before we do, I want to run asdf set zig 014.0. I'm using asdf to manage my zig versions. If you're not, uh, you can just zig init. Um, or if you're using something else, just make sure you're on 014. Okay, so we have a build zig file, a build zigs on, which I don't think we'll need. Uh, we have our main file and we have a root file. So um, additionally, you'll want to make sure that, uh, oh shoot, there we go, uh, that image magic is installed. So magic uh, dash version should give you a version. Okay, let's go ahead and start with our um, build.zig file. And I'm just gonna go all the way up to the top and we're gonna delete everything. Uh, we're going to start from scratch, and I'll just type everything out. So we have our standard. Let me make this a little bigger for you. So we have our uh, standard library that we're going to import. So import standard. And we're going to create our build function. Uh, it's not too often I write these by hand. Usually I just modify the existing build function that's generated for me. Uh, so bear with me. Uh, if I get some of the syntax wrong, we'll fix it as we go. Um, just like usual, we're going to get a handle on our target. So we're going to say b.standard target options. And then we can pass in an anonymous struct. Same with optimize. So this will be B standard optimize option. And again, pass in an empty struct. We need to set up our executable. So this will be our Zig program. So I'm gonna call it image magic, uh, image magic exe, and it'll be b.add executable. And we can pass in anonymous struct. This one's gonna have some fields though. So we have a name. So we'll do zig image magic. We have a root source file, which will be b.path. And this will be source main.zig. Whoops. Main.zig. Our target will be set to whatever we resolve from our target. And optimize will do the same. Okay, now we need to add the image magic library. So we have a couple different things we're gonna do here. We're gonna get a handle on our image magic exe and we're gonna call link system library to that. 
we're going to link magic wand. And then we're going to do the same thing again, and we're going to link a system library, and this one's going to be magic core. Finally, we're going to link libc. So if we link libc. Uh, we can install the executable into our build directory using b.install artifact image magic exe. And then we're going to create a run step to take care of running our program for us. So b.add run artifact uh, image magic exe. And then we need to make sure that our run. Oh, I see why I have a syntax error. Uh, there we go. Need to make sure that our run command depends on, so we'll grab our run command step and say depend on b.get install step. So we can't run it without installing it. And then we need to make the run step available with the zig build run. So we'll do something like const run step is equal to b.step run. And then we'll give it a description, run the code example. And we can do run step dot depend on. And we have a reference to run CMD step. Okay, so I think that should take care of it for our build file. It's only 25 lines, which is not bad at all. So before we look at our main code, it's important to understand how Zig works with C. Zig can directly import C headers using the at C import directive uh, or built in. C functions, types, and constants become available as if they were handled in native Zig. Zig handles our memory management and error handling in its own way. And we can mix Zig and C freely using Zig safety features with C's ecosystem, which is really powerful. Uh, this gives us immediate access to thousands of mature C libraries without any wrappers or bindings. Now let's go ahead and wire up our image magic in our Zig code. So if I vim source main.zig, we have a lot going on here and we're gonna get rid of all of it. So I'm gonna go to the top of the file, I'm gonna delete everything and we're gonna start from scratch. So I've got const standard, and we're gonna import std. I have a C import here, so I am just gonna call this C in our case, since it's coming from C. Uh, it might be better to come up with a better name for this, but one of the benefits of me doing this for YouTube is that my examples can be really contrived. If you're doing this in your production grade code base, maybe come up with a better import name. Okay, so we have a C import and I need to at C include, we need a comp time path. So all I need is magic wand slash magic wand H. Uh, and yeah, that should be a semicolon. Okay, so that gives us our handle on our magic wand, uh, which is uh, the image magic library. I guess that's important to clarify. And then we're gonna go ahead and create our main method. So we have a pub fun main, just like normal. Nothing new here. And in fact, actually the really cool part about this is basically everything you're gonna see from this point is standard Zig. There's not really anything C-ish going on or anything really strange that, that would feel different if you are uh, used to writing Zig, for example. Okay, so uh, in our main method, we are going to call c.magicwandgenesis. And you'll notice that we're getting some type suggestions from our C import and our C include, which is super nice. Um, as for the specifics here, the best thing I could tell you is uh, look up the documentation for the um, image magic library. Uh, that's all of these things map to existing C functions or C calls. Um, I guess that would be a function. So if you want more familiarity on Magic Wand and what you can do with Magic Wand or Image Magic, um, check out the documentation. You can use any of it available here. It's really, really powerful. Okay, I'm gonna defer the terminus, which is essentially the cleanup. They have fun names for all of this. So we call Magic Wand Genesis to start everything. We defer the cleanup, which is terminus. Uh, we are going to create a wand. So we'll do c.newmagicwand. And uh, we can do some checks here. So this, this could come back as null. So you can see that it is a potentially null pointer to a struct magic wand. So let's check. 
So if wand is equal to null, um, we have some issues, right? We'll just return an error. Magic wand creation failed. And then we're going to defer c.destroy magic wand and we'll pass in our wand. This is essentially the pattern that we're going to use over and over again here. So we are creating our wand. The next thing we need to do is um, read in an image. So we can do that with cons. We'll go ahead and name this status. It'll be C magic read image. We need to give it a wand to read into. Thankfully, we have a handle on a wand. And then we need to give it a path. I'm just going to call this input PNG. And we'll need to add this to our folder, but we'll, we'll do that after the fact. Don't let me forget. Again, uh, this is interesting enough. You can see that this is a C U int. So this is a, this is a C unsigned int. So we can check this using another uh, primitive that's available in our magic wand library called magic false. So we can check if the status is false. And if so, um, you know, we could do a couple different things. Uh, the short and sweet here is we are in a, essentially an unrecoverable path, so we need to make sure that we're relinquishing memory. This is where it gets a little weird when you're interacting with a C library that takes care of its own allocations, right? So we need to make sure that we're cleaning up um, our C code. So what we can do here is something like we can get a handle on the exception type, and this is going to be a C dot exception type. Again, this comes from image magic, and it'll be undefined by default. We can get a description here. So C magic get exception. We have a wand and then we have an exception type. And I need to assign this. I did not assign it to anything. So let's go back and do that. Okay, so we have our description here and then we can defer cleaning up, right? So we want to defer C dot magic relinquish memory. And then we can pass it any opaque. So in our case, we have a description. We want to free that up when we're done with it here. And really all I want to do is do a standard debug print error reading image. And then what we'll do is we'll pass in description. And then in this case, what we can do here is return error dot image read failed. Okay. So we have our status, right? So we um, actually, in, in, in theory, we have more than just our status at this point. We have our wand. We've loaded an image into our wand. Now let's do some stuff with it, right? So we can get a sepia. Uh, I'm going to call the sepia status again since it's returning a status. And this will be magic sepia tone image. And one thing really nice about the image library is that if you want to do sepia, it's just built in. So you could go through and manually uh, manipulate each pixel if you wanted to take that approach. Um, but you can also just grab the sepia tone image. And that's what we're going to do here since it's a little simpler. Actually, it's quite, quite a bit simpler. Uh, there's a threshold value here. I've done a little bit of testing. I found that 58,000 is roughly what we want. Um, but you can check the documentation for image magic and figure out exactly what that value should be. So it's called a threshold value. Feel free to search the documentation for that if you'd like. Okay, let's check if sepia status. And again, we're going to check if this is magic false. Thankfully, image magic makes that nice and easy for us. Um, what we have here is essentially the same thing as above. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into visual here. We'll go to the end of this line. And I'm just going to yank all of this. We'll come back down here. We'll paste it, fix our formatting there. And what we have here is almost the exact same. So we have an exception type. We have a description that we're getting from the wand with an exception type that we're passing in a reference to. Uh, we are deferring, freeing up that memory for the description. And then we are going to change our debug message to be something a little bit more clear. So in our case, it'll be error applying sepia filter. And then we'll put a new image here called sepia tone failed. Okay. We're on the home stretch now. All we need to do is actually write our image. So again, we're going to let image magic take care of the heavy lifting here. 
Uh, we could always try to get the bytes back from Image Magic and write them to the file system in Zig, but since we're letting Image Magic do everything else, I'm just gonna let it continue doing its job and write things out for us. So I can call C dot magic write image. And again, we have a wand. And then we need to give this output dot JPG. So we'll give it a file name. Mine's just called output since I've got input going in, output going out, makes sense. And surprising no one, we're gonna come up here, yank all of this, hop down here, paste, fix our formatting. And then we have a couple things to change, right? So this will become write status. And the rest of this will be the exact same, except our debug message will change again. So this will be something like error, writing image. And then our error message will be error image right failed. And then we can do something like standard debug print here at the end, image processing completed successfully. So if we've made it to this point, we are good to go. We have loaded up our image, we've added it to the wand, we have applied the sepia tone, and then we have written it to our output file. Okay. Feels pretty good. It's 45 lines to create a wrapper around image magic in Zig that takes a file and uh, applies a sepia filter to it. Let's go ahead and give this a Zig build and we'll see what I failed to do correctly. I actually let it be known that I did not make an error. No typos. Uh, excellent. Okay, cool. Uh, Zig build run. Let's give this a go. Ah, okay, we have an issue. Uh, error reading image, unable to open image input.png. You all let me forget. I asked you specifically not to let me forget, but you did. Okay, I've got my zig image magic folder up. Here's my input file, input.png. This is from a different video. You should go check that out though. It was a really fun project. So if you haven't seen this one yet, go check it out. Uh, and what I wanna do is apply that sepia. So I've got it named input.png. You know, if we wanted to, we could take the file path in as input to our program. Uh, but I just have it hard coded. So we just need to make sure that it matches input.png. So if we give this a zig build run, you can see that image processing completed successfully. Let's go take a look at our folder and we can see that there's output.jpg and there's a nice sepia filter that's been applied. Okay, so here are some key things to remember when using C libraries in zig. You're gonna use at C import to import your C header files. Make sure that you use link system library in your build script to link against your C libraries and then call C functions directly while leveraging Zig's error handling. It makes it so much nicer. Remember to use defer to clean up resource management, just like you would in normal Zig. And then remember that C libraries follow C conventions. So you might run into things like null checks and specific return values that indicate statuses uh, or things of that nature. Lastly, there's one thing we didn't really run into, but if you have multiple versions and you need to use a specific version, you can add library paths in your build step for your specific version as well. This pattern works for thousands of C libraries, not just image magic, and you can apply these same techniques to libraries like libcurl, SDL, SQLite, and many, many more. That's it for this tutorial on using C libraries in Zig. We've seen how easy it is to leverage existing C code while enjoying Zig's safety features and elegant syntax. The ability to work seamlessly with C code is one of Zig's biggest strengths, giving you access to decades of established libraries when writing modern, safer code. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe for more Zig tutorials. Drop a comment if you have questions. Thanks for watching, happy coding, and have a great day.